Hi, it's so nice to be here. Um, I was listening to uh, the previous two speakers and I, I, there's so much that I can relate to and so much that I can connect with um, and it's very special to me. I'm standing here because I've, I've had a 17 year long journey um, learning how to connect with myself um, and that's probably been the most important thing because if I have a look at where I find myself today, it is I'll go through life all on my own or as you know, alone as I'm going to be, you know, that's my choice because for me my mind and my body and my soul really needs to be connected. And sometimes it's so easy to go through life and not feel connected to myself. And that also like really prevents me from connecting with those around me. So my journey started, I think it was September 20, 2006. So the 19th of September 2006, I embarked on a new journey for myself where I just really felt like, you know, I wanted to be more connected to life. Um, and I wanted to connect with myself and how can I do that? So I started exploring spirituality, I started meditating um, and I started connecting with myself. Um, I fell in love with the ocean even more than I did ever before. I've been surfing since I was about six years old, so it's actually 32 years. Um, I've been in the ocean that entire time, but through life and you know going through life and having you know an incredible amount of experiences, you know, I lost track of who Kevin really was. Um, society says this, friends say that, let's go do this, and it, you know, it's just all over the show. Um, so yeah, I'm going to move on to the next one, which is um, opportunity. So I got an opportunity to start connecting with myself and exploring this. Um, I started hanging out with people that I found that had something that I wanted. Um, in order for me to be able to learn things, I need to surround myself with people that talk about those topics, that experience those things. Um, you know, there were times in my life where I really enjoyed thinking that I know best, and I just don't always know best. Um, if I become arrogant in life, you know, I'm gonna suffer. Um, and I'm going to step on toes and I'm going to make mistakes and people are going to get upset. And um, that's just one of those things. Um, I've had to learn the hard way. I've had to step on toes. I've had to end friendships just to learn all these lessons. There's something I really like to say. No lesson in life is a bad lesson. It's a lesson. If I choose to learn from it, you know, it will never be a problem. And I'll always be able to deal with that situation going forward. So my journey in traversing with life and getting to move through it, you know, along with me, like physically, mentally, spiritually being connected has been vitally important to get to this place now. Um, I met Adriana last week Thursday for the first time and here I am today. Um, so yeah, it is amazing. That brings me also to, uh, you know, the potential of what these connections possibly could have for me in my life. You know, I, I walk through the streets of Shanghai on a daily basis. I've got my bags here, I've got three cameras in there, and I always try and document things because I see incredibly beautiful moments. Um, and if I don't stop and connect with human beings, then I might miss so many opportunities for collaborations, for just having that awesome conversation. I've uh, being on the subway and engaging in conversations with someone sitting next to me, you know, riding on the elevator, taking some of these small um, You know, it doesn't matter where it is or where it's been, but I've had to learn to allow myself, you know, to just step slightly out of my comfort zone and find something to mention to this human being and start a conversation. It's not because I want something other than just to experience this moment and maybe just connect with the human being. And that's something I lacked previously in my life. I couldn't even connect with myself on that sort of level. But as I started this journey 17 years ago, I started hanging out with more friends and people that you know had something that I wanted. Uh, I learned how to connect with myself, and that made it just so much easier for me to be able to connect with other human beings in life. Um, Self-discovery is probably has been the most important thing. I am still continuously, you know, on this path and journey of self-discovery. Um, this was a photo taken in, in, in 
Guangzhou, actually Shenzhen, oh, I'm in Shenzhen. Um, and it just like really reminded me of something that I find myself in life sometimes standing completely alone, there's nothing going on around me, um, and what is it that I do? You know, life for me is constantly evolving, I'm constantly evolving, or I'm just like st staying stuck in one place, um, and I don't want to stay stuck there. I want to evolve, I want to learn, I want to outgrow, you know, the personal human being that I was yesterday. The only way that I can do that is by continuing to find out what it is that I like and enjoy, who I like to spend time with, who can I connect with, and what value can I bring, you know, to someone else's life. Um, and you know, whether that is just a brief five minute conversation, I can add a smile to their life, um, or it could be a collaboration with you know, uh, a business or someone needing a photographer or anything else in life um, that allows me to go through things. Then authenticity. Um, as I progress through this journey of self-discovery, um, I learn how to be a little bit more authentic with myself. You know, when I discovered more about what I truly like and not just what I like because friends like it and I can feel part of that, but what I truly liked and it stood out for me, you know, I learned how to be authentic. And in me learning how to be more authentic, it allowed other people to be more authentic with our interactions. Um, you know, there's this certain sense that I get from people when I connect with them um, based on how authentic I can be, you know, and how much easier it makes it for them to feel that sort of connectedness, um, feel that sort of trust and openness that there is, and the level of honesty and just how easy it is to connect with people. Um, and that for me is probably just one of the most beautiful moments in life is when I can be authentic with another human being and they can be authentic back. You know, we just for that brief moment, we're just ourselves and that's okay. Then I skip too much. Vulnerability. Um, this is where it comes in. Like, how easy is it for me to make myself vulnerable? Like, how easy is it for me to actually express who Kevin truly is to another human being that I know nothing of? You know, it's scary. People can use these things to hurt me. Um, you know, it's 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 been a, a very difficult thing for me to learn, but I've learned that it doesn't really matter. You know, other people may or may not want to do things that that may or may not hurt me. It's quite irrelevant, but I don't go putting myself out there to try and get hurt, but I allow myself to, in this moment, having learned all these lessons that I've learned, to just connect. In the moment, you know, when we have conversations, whether it is about, you know, tea farms in Yunnan, or coffee, you know, coming from Ethiopia, or photographers based all over the world, or, you know, <laughs> technology, it doesn't matter. Like if we can connect and make ourselves vulnerable in that moment and allow ourselves to just be who we are right now, um, that's beautiful. And in doing so, it just makes it a lot easier for me to walk around the streets, meet strangers, connect with them, have these moments, and ultimately I just want to continue to contribute. In order to do that, I need to make myself a little bit more vulnerable. Um, this was a photo taken, as we all know, last year in lockdown. Um, I found an opportunity to connect with two human beings. Um, it was probably one of the loneliest times for many, many people. You know, and yes, we did sneak out, and yes, we did go take portraits in an alleyway in the compound. But how beautiful is the story to be able to tell that you know, when most people were just stuck inside their house and they could not get out, you know, we found a way to actually just spend five minutes together and. You know, that is beautiful. Um, I absolutely love this. Um, this is something that carried me through there. You know, I was actually standing on my balcony taking photos, flying drones and, and doing my thing. And I, I had a good time. Um, but the only reason why I had a good time um, being in isolation was because I felt extremely comfortable with where I'm at. You know, my mind, for me, mentally, physically, spiritually, I was completely okay sitting with myself. <clears throat> then I get chance encounters. Um, these chance encounters are so beautiful. Um, this photograph is uh, 
was taken of someone that I met at another friend's birthday party and we never had a conversation the entire day. Um, and just briefly later on when I called the Didi and I left, um, we happened to you know, just glance up at each other and say goodbye and I just said, well, I think I need to make you reach out. I'd really like to do some photos for you sometime. Um, and this is what we got. Um, some beautiful things lead up to beautiful moments, you know, and it all started with a random connection. But I had to put in the effort to actually approach this person and be like, hey, would it be possible for me to connect with you and actually have a coffee with you and discuss potentially doing some photography with you? Being real, um, it's, it's always been very, very hard to truly be real because if, you know, for me when I was a lot younger, being real meant I had to be me, but I never knew what, you know, who I was. You know, I, I knew what my friends liked, or the people that I, I thought I called friends liked, and what society said, if you wear these shoes and you go to these places, then you're, you know, you're like hip and happening. Um, so it was always really, really difficult to be real. But over the years when I learned more about who I was and what I enjoyed, um, I found myself spending a lot more time with myself and it was just so much easier to be more real um, because I had actually learned quite a lot about myself. I love documenting reality. Um, this human being I met in Hainan when I lived in Hainan in 2020, um, just after COVID happened and three years later I got to document this moment and she She's a DJ, she's a singer, songwriter, and this was her just doing her thing. Um, and it's probably one of the most beautiful moments um, ever. And this was done three years after we connected for the first time. I just happened to find out she lived in Shanghai, and then I moved to Shanghai. As I mentioned earlier on collaborations, um, it's probably been one of the most important things in my life, especially as a freelance photographer, the collaborations, the people that I've met. Um, I sat next to this girl, there was no other seats available, I asked if the seats open, if I could sit there, she said yes. Ten minutes later I asked if I could take her photo, because I really thought it looked nice. And um, so, very very soon we're going to collaborate, I'm going to do photos for their startup. You know, they, they, they created a brand of perfume. Um, and because I love doing full photography, we're going to get an opportunity to work together. And it all started because I opened my mouth. And normally, back in the day, I'd, too, I'd, I'd just be too scared to open my mouth and approach a stranger that I've never spoken to and ask them a question. Emotions. <laughs> this is a tough one. But um, it's okay for me to be able to show my emotions to myself when I'm sitting alone in a room, let alone being able to make myself vulnerable, sit in front of another human being that I don't really know all too well and get to express these things. Um, for me, that's why I love photography and that's why I love doing what I do because I get to experience these moments where other people allow themselves to be more vulnerable and just express what they are truly feeling. But also being able to be a medium to just be there for those human beings and actually be present, you know, listen and, um, you know, I've established a friendship with this human being um, that's still lasting. Observation. Um, in my life, through this journey, traversing through life, learning all these things, I get to observe. You know, I get to observe moments. Um, all of these photos, except for the bottom left one, was taken in Shanghai. Um, the one in the middle is a friend of mine who lives in Beijing. Um, you know, bottom right, that's on the way to the ferry. My parents were here earlier this year. I got to see them first time in four years. Um, and these are just some of the moments that I get to observe um, in my life. And then another part is where I remove the blinders. You know, when I look into just into one direction, but I miss everything else going on around it. If I remove these blinders, that the horses wear when they're racing. You know, for me personally, um, I get to see so much more about what's happening around me. Um, this is Anfulu, I'm, I'm there quite often taking photos, but I get to see incredibly beautiful human beings. I get to connect with them. The guy on the left, I actually saw him again yesterday. I, I see them quite regularly. 
Um, and it's, it's amazing the kind of beauty that I get to see in life when I remove these blinders. You know, this, this human being, you know, just an example, um, learning more about me and, and what I like to do, connecting with human beings and expressing my passion, um, allows me to have a voice and a perspective, and I get to show and share this with other human beings. Um, she was told by her friends that she's not photogenic and she's not beautiful, um, and it took about six months for her to allow me to take a photo of her. Um, this is all done on film, I do analog photography, and it looks like this could be on the cover of a magazine. Um, her response to this was, wow, is this me? It's amazing. So that is, you know, something that I've found that I can contribute to other people's lives, is being able to, you know, mention something, being able to acknowledge, be observant, and say, but you look really lovely today, you smell nice, you're beautiful. Um, but I get to express this, with, you know, for other people. And then empathy, understanding and being able to share, you know, feelings and emotions with other, pe other people. It's something that I, I never knew how to do because I didn't know how to even express what it was that I truly felt. Here I get to do it a lot more today. Time constraints. I'm always generally, in the past, have been self-centered and selfish. My time is very precious, so I'll try and keep most of it just for myself. Um, it's very hard to give some of my time to another human being, but as this journey has progressed, I've learned that I've actually got a lot of time to offer to other human beings. If I just allow myself, um, everything's taken care of. I get to work, I get to make money, I get to study, I get to take photos, and I get to connect with people. Um, I make a point of at least five to 15 minutes a day to connect with strangers or human beings that don't really know well. This journey has been absolutely amazing and it has taught me a lot. Um, this is a fellow photographer that I met in, in, in Shanghai and he's from the US. Um, and it's just another one of those special moments that I get to connect with another human being and experience this entire journey, you know, and grow and share and progress in life. This is an influencer, you know, another person that I just happened to randomly meet and connect with. Um, it's you never know who you can connect with, you know? If, if, if you meet them, and you have a conversation with them, it's pretty awesome. And this uh, brings me to the last point. Um, I've got a different kind of richness in my life today. I've got a lot of, you know, real beautiful moments that I get to capture and share with human beings. Um, and it's something that lasts me forever. You know, moments that I've captured eight years ago, I still remember some of those moments and actually just like so grateful that I get to experience this and get to capture these moments with other human beings because I know this will you know, remain in the back of my head, in my memory bank for as long as I get to live. I'm extremely grateful to be here and having heard the other speakers um, and that's it for me. Thanks.